Uh, we are very excited uh, to see all of you here. I wish I could be seeing you in person, but uh, I could see various names and uh, uh, funny characters uh, and stuff your faces. But uh, I'm glad that you're all uh, excited about uh, Cal State San Bernardino. It's a great place to come. Uh, and especially the chemistry and biochemistry department is uh, one of our best departments um, in terms of providing undergraduate research opportunities, uh, good mentoring in the department uh, for our students. Um, they have wonderful labs uh, that uh, I, I hope uh, you get to see that sometime very soon. Uh, of course, that all depends on how we are maintaining our social distance and uh, fight this virus. Um, so, but it is a, a great place to come and I just want you to know your success is our number one priority. Uh, for the whole university, the student success is our number one priority and we take it uh, close to our heart to make sure that um, uh, you are successful, uh, not only when you are here, but through, throughout your career. We want to continue to maintain those relationships. I was just reading the highlights from um, our college and um, uh, Dr. Kim Cousins sent several things about how our alumni are having an impact on uh, COVID-19, uh, various things that our alumni are doing. Uh, so I'm really proud of our uh, chemistry and biochemistry department. And I know Dr. Cousins will, um, Toot a lot more about the department than I would, but I, I, I would say that uh, I'm delighted to see that uh, you're interested in our college and in our department. Um, uh, I would uh, personally like to welcome all of you. Um, the thing that is, is we, we take pride in kind of uh, striving for excellence. We always set uh, uh, the bar high and uh, help our students achieve the excellence goals. Uh, we take pride in the quality of work we do, whether it is in our teaching or in our research or in our service areas, uh, in our college and especially in chemistry and biochemistry. Um, and also that uh, we are very much interested in enhancing diversity in our college, uh, whether it is in terms of uh, gender diversity, LGBTQ community, or in terms of um, uh, Hispanic and African American and other populations as well. Uh, we are committed to, and and, uh, and the other thing important is that we, we do have a lot of first generation students, uh, um, first in their family to go to college. Um, we work with all of our students to make sure that uh, you are successful uh, in our college and in, in our department. We also work across the departments in harmony and um, uh, interdisciplinary type of work. Uh, as you can see, chemistry and biochemistry are there. They work closely with our, uh, for example, our physics department. Uh, we are starting a, uh, working on a new master's in material science program uh, through our uh, grant from National Science Foundation. Um, so. So there's lots of exciting things that uh, our faculty, especially, I mean, uh, Dr. Cousins is a leader in terms of um, uh, how best to use uh, data-based, uh, data-enabled, evidence-based teaching methodology in our classrooms uh, to make sure that you are getting outstanding teaching from our faculty uh, throughout your time at Cal State San Bernardino. So again, I'm really thrilled to see your interest in us. Uh, please feel free to email me. I'll send you my email address. Uh, I will always respond to your questions, uh, usually within a day. So please make sure that uh, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to write to me now or in the future. You could also follow me on the, my Instagram. Uh, a lot of students message me on my Instagram, then send me an email. So. I would encourage you to do so. Um, with that, um, we're looking forward to seeing you to be a part of our UOT family. I'll turn things back to Roberto. Thank you very much, Dean. Well, I don't want to cause it, have any other delays.
I'll just briefly mention who we have with us today uh, is the chair for the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, Dr. Kim Cousins, who will be starting off shortly. But I also think we have a very special guest, Jonathan Gonzalez Montalongo from our uh, orientation and first year experience, who's been a great ally of us uh, for so long. And then also from the College of Natural Sciences uh, advising offices, we have Dr. Lisa Guzman, who will also give us a brief overview of what, why advising is so important and critical for your success here. Uh, so with that, I'll turn us over to Dr. Kim Cousins, the Chair of the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Thank you, Dr. Cousins. Well, welcome everybody. I have a few slides to share with you here. So you're, if you were on campus today, I would love to be able to give you a tour of our department. Since we cannot physically be on campus, I'm gonna do the best, next best thing and give you a virtual tour. Uh, this is the outside of the building for the Chemical Sciences Building, it was completed in 2005. It's where most of the research labs, teaching labs, and faculty offices for the department are, and many of the classrooms. I found a short video that says it's for the whole college, but it really has a lot of footage from our department, so I'd like to share that with you. Uh, Dr. Cousins, I hate to interrupt, but the, the image on your screen is of a, a blank, uh, uh, like a template or a blank PowerPoint. Is that still blank? Yes, I see a blank that says click to add title. Uh, uh, well, it shows on my screen and I'm sharing my screen, so you have a backup of my slides, correct? I sent them to you. Let me open that one up. So those of you visiting today, this is what online teaching is like. And in the days of COVID-19, this is the kinds of things that happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Cousins, if you click on share screen, that green button at the bottom, when you click on it, it should show you multiple images. Yes, it does. I and do then... this all the time. So there's some technical problem. When I'm the, the host, I have no problems. I see the PowerPoint. I'm clicking on the PowerPoint. And you guys can't there see the PowerPoint. There we go. Oh, it's, it's here this time? Yes. Oh, I gave you full okay. hosting. Thank you. So, OK, great, great. OK, so if you were here on campus, I would give you a virtual tour. Since you're not, I will. I mean, a real tour, I'll give you a virtual tour. So here is a picture of our chemical sciences building. I think I had just said all this stuff about it being from 2005. So I'll go ahead and click on the video, which has a lot of footage out of our department. Wait, the link doesn't work this way. I'm going to again do it the old fashioned way. This is hard not being the host. These things work in class. Dr. Cuz, I made you the host, so you should have full hosting capabilities. Well, yeah, but it's just not working. <laughs> I don't know why it's not working. Oh, because I'm not actually showing this slideshow. Okay, let's try this again. Can you see it now? Are we back to a white screen? It's an image of, a, it's actually your image, uh, Dr. Cousins. So it's not showing an image of the Chemical Sciences Building? No. Which is showing on mine. Okay. Let me see if I can open. Let me see if I can open up on uh, the link from uh, my. College of Natural Sciences uh, consists hold, hold of on. nine departments. Hold up. <laughs> this is real fun. We should have done a run through. <laughs> there we okay. go. We see it. Okay, so you can see the the movie. Good. <laughs> We're going in the right direction here. Offers bachelor's, master's degrees and curricula for pre-professional students in medicine, veterinary medicine, nutrition, physical therapy, and dentistry. Programs within the College of Natural Sciences can prepare you for science and health-related jobs in the public or private sector, a career in teaching, a graduate or professional education, science, technology, 
engineering and mathematics, and the health fields play an increasingly important role in our society. The college seeks to educate the next generation of scientists and future health professionals, as well as science literate citizens equipped to make informed decisions in daily life. The college educates teachers who effectively teach our children. Students in this college are provided a broad-based, fundamental education in the natural sciences and allied health fields and are challenged to think critically, analytically, and creatively. So again, that was a college level, but you can't see this, right? <laughs> Is it white again, or am I back? We can see it. You can see the picture? Yes, you can see the picture. Oh, great, okay. So that was a college-based video, but most of the footage was uh, recorded in our department. Some of it was recorded in the biology department, and all of the students in our department take at least one biology course. Of course, now. There we see if we can make it go forward. There we go. Okay, so chemistry is an experimental scientist uh, science. As such, we have science principles in both our lecture and lab course. Here is one of our faculty members demonstrating uh, pressure effect on uh, volume in a classroom. This is Dr. David Maynard from the chemistry department. Our students also work closely with our faculty in both the teaching and the research labs. Here, Dr. Zhang is, is preparing a, a thin film of a material as part of a collaboration between the departments of chemistry and physics. This work is supported by the National Science Foundation. Dr. Beiersdorf's research, he's gonna tell you a little bit as, about his research in atmospheric chemistry. Hi, I'm Andreas Farsdorf, an analytical and environmental chemistry professor at Cal State San Diego. My research looks at aerosols, which are tiny solids and liquids suspended in the air. And these are the difference between a clean day and a dirty day when we talk about air. And they're detrimental when we breathe them in because they fog up our air. My research group does research both here at San Bernardino and also through collaboration with other researchers at the company. I look forward to seeing you at Cal State San Bernardino. So Dr. Byersdorf and Dr. Zhang are just two of the 13 faculty members in our department who work with students in research. So our students, um, chemistry is a hands-on endeavor and our students prepare to tackle many problems in health and medicine, consumer products, the environment. Um, for example, and Dr. Um, Dr. Pantula stole my thunder on this one, two of our recent chemistry and biochemistry alum are currently on the front lines of research into both detection and treating COVID-19. Our students have opportunities to develop leadership skills by participating in opportunities within and beyond the department. Here, a um, student was speaking to potential coyotes at a recruitment event about a year ago. She was explaining her research experience in Nebraska. Our faculty are deeply committed to our student success and our department graduates more than 60 students per year with concentrations in either chemistry or biochemistry. Most chemistry and biochemistry classes are of moderate size, 100 or below, with upper division classes ranging from 16 to 60 and upper division labs at 20 or below. All of our upper division labs are taught by PhD level faculty. Faculty work hard to help students succeed. Here is our 2018 Golden Apple Teaching Award winner, Dr. Larry Mink. He's an inorganic chemist, and he, along with Dr. Byersdorf and some others, have recently received a large grant to promote student success in our general chemistry course. We support all our majors by regular required advising. 
Experimental chemistry requires modern instrumentation. Unlike universities with graduate programs, all of our instruments are used by undergraduates as either part of their uh, laboratory curriculum and or research. Shown here is the magnet for our 400 megahertz NMR spectrometer. This state-of-the-art instrument is the premier way to look at organic molecules. Oops. There we go. Our graduates move on to careers in chemistry and biochemistry laboratories, water districts, government and industrial labs, and more. Nearly half of our graduates attain additional training after undergraduate school, either in graduate programs, chemistry and biochemistry, in education, or specialized training in areas such as forensics or clinical laboratory science. The hands-on nature of our program is demonstrated by the fact that most of our courses have 45 or more hours of laboratory instruction. Our, both of our BS programs are certified by the American Chemical Society, which is the premier professional society in chemistry. These programs have at least 400 hours of laboratory instruction beyond general chemistry. By applying knowledge from our lecture classes, laboratories allow students to practice their science and prepare for careers. Uh, shown here is our 2020 Department of Chemistry Outstanding undergraduate, Hannah. She's completed a double major in both chemistry and physics. She's co-authored a paper in chemical biology, undertaken two different summer internships at research-centered universities across the country, and was recently awarded a very prestigious fellowship for her graduate studies from the National Science Foundation. We really look forward to having you come join Hannah and other students in our department next year. And that concludes my presentation. I certainly welcome questions from you following our, um, our remaining speakers or in the chat box. Thank you very much, Dr. Cousins. Uh, I, uh, just on a quick side note, I'm gonna ask if you can give me a, a, a hosting. Uh, you just have to hover over me and, and, and resume back. Uh, uh, but otherwise, I'll take this moment and uh, very fortunate to have another great colleague, uh, Dr. Lisa Guzman, who's the director of a College of Natural Science Advising, uh, who would like to give, uh, provide students with a brief overview about the importance of advising and what it can bring to the, your experience here, not only at the college, but here at the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Thank you, Dr. Guzman. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, welcome, welcome all of you. Um, yes, as, as Roberto mentioned, I'm here to speak a little bit about some of the resources that we have on campus for you and then also within our college. Um, I think it's very important for you to know that we collaborate very closely with other units, other colleges on campus, um, our undergraduate studies. Um, they have an advising and academic services as well. And we work very closely with them because we want you to have um, the best sources of support that we can provide. Um, so that's not only at the university level, but also within our college. Um, within our college, we actually have three advising centers. We have a STEM center. Uh, we have health professions advising center. We also have a professional advising center. Um, and all of those centers are here to service our students. Um, we want you to be successful. We want to make sure that you are on the right um, path, um, whether that be academic, career for, um, focused, major exploration. Um, if we don't have uh, the information or resources for you, we definitely work with you to put you in contact to those throughout campus, rather that be supplemental instruction, uh, tutoring, financial aid. Um, so, you know, from my perspective, we just want to make sure that you're provided um, all the opportunities that you have. And as Dr. Uh, Cousins mentioned, there are a lot of internship opportunities, uh, research opportunities, and we really encourage you to reach out to your faculty members. Um, chemistry department has wonderful uh, faculty advisors and they are all, we are all invested in your success. Thank you very much, Dr. Guzman. Just so in case for our folks out, out there that uh, uh, make sure they grasp it firmly is, we have a rich array of advising resources here, whether it is in the form of a faculty advisor, whether it's in the form of an advisor that's part of the College of Natural Sciences, uh, whether it's an advisor through our other university divisions, 
Uh, these are all individuals that are going to be working as allies uh, to help our students. Am I correct there, Dr. Guzman? That is absolutely true. And, you know, we rely on each other because we know our students see uh, multiple people on campus for support services. So, um, you know, if it's not someone at the university level, you will certainly find that, um, as I mentioned, by your faculty and with our advisors in the, in, at the college level. Thank you, Dr. Guzman. And for all of our students that are attending here, uh, the services and questions that they can help, you know, shed light on range from small to large. As Dr. Guzman said, if you need, want to get information about the types of careers that might be worth exploring, we have the staff and the resources to help you. If you have questions about mentors, tutoring, study tips, we have the individuals here that can help you. If you need help mapping out your, your two, your four years out to complete your program, to graduate, and for you to succeed, we have people, resources, and information to make that possible. So definitely we want to make sure that our students take that away uh, from uh, Dr. Guzman's presentation, as well as uh, all the statements that uh, Dr. Cousins and our other colleagues are always here to help as well. Uh, at this time, let me see if we have any questions uh, from our, uh, our students. And if you, anyone does have any, please, please definitely use the chat feature. We're happy to hear of any questions you may have. Uh, and also for everyone that is interested, uh, put your email in the chat feature if you'd also like to uh, uh, view a recording of this webinar uh, for future reference or just kind of brush up on some of the information that we're sharing with everyone. Dr. Cousins, I was wondering if, you, if uh, right now it may, may be a good opportunity to very briefly speak about the uh, uh, material science. Okay, so it at this point, we have a undergraduate degree in chemistry, as I'm assuming that everybody in this chat box or in this uh, session is actually applying as an undergrad. Actually, I'd like to ask that. Of all the people who are here, can you find the little tools on the bottom that are reactions? If you can, give me a thumbs up. I see that Eddie found it. Okay, so use the clap hands if you are a incoming freshman. Use the thumbs up if you're an incoming transfer student. So we're, all, we're quite mixed here. Um, we actually, our graduating classes tend to be close to 50-50 of transfer and freshman, and that's represented here. Um, so, I know you're just beginning to think about your college career either at the freshman or junior level, but uh, the future comes quickly. And although many of our students go elsewhere for graduate programs, up until now, the only opportunity on our campus for graduate programs was in environmental science, which is interdisciplinary chemistry and geology. We're developing a new material science program, which is interdisciplinary chemistry physics, and we'll be offering classes by 2023 which will be relevant to many of you if that is an interest of yours. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Cousins. One thing I thought I'd, uh, might be worth mentioning as well is I believe that we'd had some success uh, a few months ago with some uh, funding from the National Science Foundation uh, in order to support uh, uh, research and opportunities for our students. Uh, is that something that we might be able to share uh, briefly? Sure, sure. We actually have multiple sources of, of funding that help support sure. our research and they support, um, among other things, student stipends so students can do research rather than working at an off-campus job, for example. Um, and so one of the big awards is with the National Science Foundation for our Materials Research Center, which is called the Center for Advanced Functional Materials. Um, and we have currently about 30 students in chemistry and physics working for that program. When we get fully up to speed, it will be more than 50 a year. Um, so that's a really big program. We send students to other institutions to do research as well as here. We have some partners such as um, the NASA Armstrong base up in the high desert, um, University of Nebraska at Lincoln, and University of Buffalo. We also have funding, um, and Dr. Byersdorf in particular, who you saw, has worked closely with NASA. He used to work for NASA before he um, came to Cal State San Bernardino, and he has a fair amount of funding both for on-campus and summer research related to uh, flight and air quality. 
Um, so that's his area of research. We have money from um, CSUPERB or CSUPERB, which is a biotechnology area. Um, several of our biochemists have had funding through there. We have summer research program grants. Every summer we seem to have one or more groups funded by our Office of Student Research to, to participate in the campus-wide research program for the summer. So there are many opportunities that are not just for getting the experience that you get in a research lab, but getting support as well. Thank you, Dr. Cousins. I thought I'd share some news that I'd heard about uh, kind of in the context of uh, not only the fantastic opportunities that, that the department offers its students, uh, but the linkages it can create if, for our students that are interested in looking beyond that four-year degree, uh, either going on to another institution for graduate work. In fact, I just learned one of our uh, students who I believe will be graduating, uh, Melissa Taha, who's a, bio, who's a biochemistry major, I believe just accepted uh, to go to UC Davis for a program there. Uh, and I was wondering if you might be able to uh, uh, briefly discuss about uh, that this is that beyond uh, the degree here, there are many opportunities that they can cultivate uh, when they want to pursue an advanced degree uh, at, say, another institution. So I was a first generation student myself, and, and it was very unusual for me to think about graduate school. I didn't do that until I was a senior. And when I went to my parents, they said, but you just went to college for four years. Aren't you going to graduate already? <laughs> I never did. I'm still at university, right? Um, but Graduate education allows you to move a little bit beyond that entry level job. Um, and again, graduate education can be very career focused. Uh, clinical lab science and pharmacy are two very career focused paths that a lot of our majors take. Um, we have a subset of majors who are really interested in forensic science and there's a very good program at, at Cal State LA. Um, but a number of our students, once they start learning about research and original ideas in science, wanna move beyond the bachelor's degree so that they can pursue learning new knowledge. And that's where these other graduate programs come from. Many of them go away for summer programs to other campuses. Um, another of our students was at um, Oregon State University last summer, and she's recently committed to going to Texas A&M to get a PhD in chemistry. So um, a lot of our students learn about these opportunities when they are here at Cal State at San Bernardino and pursue them. There's nothing wrong with getting a bachelor's degree and go out and working. Um, if we didn't have bachelor's level people out there, our water districts and our public health departments would stop working because um, they are staffed with Cal State San Bernardino grads as well. So. Thank you very much, Dr. Cousins. Just checking to see if anyone has any questions here. Ah, it looks like we have a uh, some biochem majors. I'm in my final year. So this is somebody who's here already at Cal State San Bernardino? Yeah, no, maybe you wanna answer? <laughs> Can everybody that. find the chat box? I see a number of participants are, are using the chat box. Uh, Adiola, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing the name uh, correct. I see the happy face on uh, I'm in, a, in my final right. year. Uh, but I actually want to take this opportunity, you know, whether our students here are our first year or whether they're transfer, uh, what I like to say is pretend, you know, you're one of, their, you're one of the faculty members in the classroom. What, are, what might be two or three things that you would advise students, again, whether they're new or whether they're coming in transfer, on things to keep in mind so that they can be positioned for success throughout any of the chemistry programs. Do you want to say something, Lisa? Yes, I, I mean, one of the things from an advising perspective, <laughs> we want to make sure that what you're doing, your coursework, um, is going to help you get to where you need to go. Um, so whether that's a two-year plan, a four-year plan, or beyond uh, that plan, uh, we wanna be part of that discussion with you. Um, rather that's exploring opportunities within chemistry and enhancing that academic experience, because it's not just academic. Um, it's also social, it's also networking, it's also um, finding out where there's internship and research opportunities. So things that are gonna help you get to where you need to go, um, 
you don't have to wait till the very end. And that's really not where you're going to find the success waiting till that next phase actually <laughs> happens. Um, it takes effort and it takes conversation and it takes planning. Um, so, uh, you know, like I said before, I, I definitely encourage you to reach out to your advisors and your faculty um, and your faculty advisors, because all of us are here um, are going to be important at different phases and at different times. And you don't want to start cultivating those relationships late. You want to make sure that you're cultivating those relationships early. Thank you very much, Dr. Guzman. Uh, Dr. Cousin, I'm actually going to jump back to you as far as uh, you know, your experience as, as an educator and also as the, the chair of the department. Uh, Oh, we, uh, sorry, I'm going to actually stop myself. I did just, uh, we're getting a question from uh, Omar. How do you find internships? Uh, there, there's obviously a, a number of different ways you can, those can be uh, uh, discovered. Uh, but I know that I'm going to actually lean on you, Dr. Guzman. I know one way, one of several ways is our advisors have information, contacts, et cetera, uh, that they're able to share with our students about internships. Am I correct? They are, and a lot of that information we get forwarded to us uh, from the faculty, from the dean. Um, so we try to be a reservoir for those for that type of information. But actually, I would probably defer more to Dr. Cousins because I think that when it comes to internships and research opportunities, um, I have found that that is really more. Um, from a faculty level that they kind of know where that information is and kind of uh, are able to present that to students uh, really uh, as an initial source. Um, we, like I said, we do act as a reservoir, but I think that that really is um, spearheaded by the faculty. Um, uh, Dr. Cousins? Thank you. So we're on how soon can you start internships? How often are they offered? Lots of internship questions. Okay, great. Well, there are, you know, you could think of two unique flavors of internships in chemistry. One is working in a chemistry research lab on or off campus, and one is working more in an, in an industrial or uh, government context. I would say as a department, we have had more success in the research realm because faculty on campus can Supervise research and because there's many, many research and research related internships available for the summer and we encourage our students to apply for these. We provide them information through our department listserv. Um, during our advising, we talk about things like this. Um, the government and industrial internships take a little more effort. They're usually initiated by a student who's very interested in an area or possibly by an alum who shows up um, with an opportunity for our students and we try to make the best match at that point. But again, it's by being in touch with the faculty, being in touch, being on the listserv and so on, that really that's how we, we connect people. Uh, how early can you start? I've had students who are very ambitious and started in their first year at Cal State San Bernardino as either freshmen or transfers. It is more common for freshmen to get a year of chemistry behind them so they have some knowledge to apply before moving into such a position. For transfers, there's no reason why you shouldn't start looking right away. Thank you very much, Dr. Cousins. For I those that have <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Cousins, what was that? I just said I see our dean returned. <laughs> Uh, for anyone that are uh, participants that haven't noticed, uh, I went ahead and also added the general college email, which we are we are very responsive to. Uh, I'm not opposed, obviously, if there's a chemistry email as well, Dr. Cousins. But uh, after this webinar is over, if you had a question or anything at all, uh, we'd be able to respond if you email us at the cns at csusb.edu email. Uh, and we can route your inquiry to the right person, or we can find that information for you as well. And as Dr. Cousins mentioned, we also were able to, uh, ah, thank you, Dr. Cousins. Dr. Cousins' email has also been posted for us, uh, for anyone that wants to uh, uh, make contact and make that connection. And yes, we also had the Dean uh, reappear, uh, join, rejoin us again, so happy to have him here. Thank you, Dean Pantula, appreciate it. I know one, uh, here we oh. Here we have another question. How will our classes lab be affected? I was about to mention that one, Dr. Cousins. Uh, okay, so 
Um, the final decisions haven't been made yet, but it's looking like social distancing is likely in all educational contexts for the next six months at least. So I would expect that there is going to be largely online classes in the fall. And it's unfortunate because we lose a little bit of that personal touch. Um, we're hoping to be able to offer some in-person labs, but again, those decisions haven't been made. Yeah, I just wanted to jump in. Uh, uh, no decision has been made about fall being online or hybrid at this stage. Uh, we're going to be keep monitoring what, what's happening uh, in the state. Uh, right now we have the shelter in place orders, so we don't have a choice. Um, but I agree with Dr. Pezens. I mean, um, um, there are indications that there may not be a vaccine ready by then, et cetera. So we'll be very careful. Your safety is the most important thing for us. So we will follow the, um, what the scientists recommend um, and, and go from there. But we'll keep you posted. Uh, but right now, there's no decision made. Thank you, uh, uh, Dean Pantula. And if I may, uh, I know with, with you know, uh, the experience is different than some students may, may, may have been expecting before. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that uh, between what we have been, how we've been responding from the faculty, from the staff, from our advisors, from everyone on campus, that we've really doubled down on delivering uh, the best equivalent experience as far as content uh, and so forth. Uh, I will say as a department, we are committed to restarting our laboratory in-person experiences as soon as it's safe. So um, we don't, don't plan on reverting to an online only format. That's not appropriate. Very good, thank you. There's a question in the chat about MS in Canada. Yeah, I was looking at that question. It says something about going for a Master of Science in Canada. I was really curious as to why the student wanted to go to Canada. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, definitely if you get an undergraduate degree from a U.S. university, you can apply to Canadian graduate programs. You're not disadvantaged if that's what the question is, but uh, I don't know exactly how that's relevant to me particularly, other than um, we have a quality program especially our bachelor degree, uh, our sci bachelor of science degrees are certified by the American Chemical Society. That's well rec are recognized nationally and internationally. So it would put you in good position to be an applicant. Yeah, I think it's important to notice that uh, the good medical genetics programs uh, uh, within US and also within Canada. And uh, once you get to that stage for application, uh, Dr. Pezens and others could advise you uh, about what are the good places to uh, consider for medical genetics in the future. But uh, as she just mentioned, we provide a strong foundation, uh, uh, our program provides strong foundation for you to consider graduate programs uh, at other places. Uh, the question is, is uh, does CSUSB have a chemistry graduate program uh, again, uh, I'll let Dr. Cousins respond to that. <laughs> um, we don't have one that says chemistry. We currently have a program in environmental science that is cross-disciplinary between chemistry and, and geology with a real emphasis on water and air quality. Um, and we are developing and will be offering classes in 2023, at least that's the plan, um, in material science, which is a chemistry-related field. And we do, to add to that, we do have a master's degree in our biology program and few other programs in our college. Uh, but we are very excited about uh, the development of master's in uh, material science. That would be, again, interdisciplinary program uh, between chemistry, biochemistry, and uh, physics, et cetera. Thank you, Dean Pantula. I'm gonna jump in on the question about the Canada. How I read the question is, uh, if someone had a plan to get, get their master's in medical genetics, is a biochemistry degree from the College of Natural Sciences here, uh, will that prepare them for that type of a path? And you know, my response is, certainly, of course it will, but uh, a more qualified response would be the, for Dr. Cousins. 
Okay, so I would suggest if that was the direction you wanted to go, to get a bachelor's degree in chemistry with biochemistry concentration is a good foundation. You might also consider adding a minor in biology or a number of our biochemistry majors over the years have worked with the um, CIRM program, which is a stem cell research program and have gone on to, for careers very similar to that. So that's an opportunity that's in the biology department, but biochemistry students have qualified in the past. Thank you very much, Dr. Cousins. Hopefully that answered that, that question. Uh, we just had a message from uh, the Dean. <laughs> I'm kind of curious with the number of participants joining us, uh, maybe with a thumbs up, is there anyone who is with us from outside the United States? Uh, definitely we have one individual. If you're from outside the United States, maybe show us a thumbs up. I actually think she might have left. Ah, uh, gotcha. <laughs> if you're from California, give us a thumbs up. This is just a check to see if you're still there. <laughs> All right, a lot, a lot of local folks with this. Happy to have everyone here, obviously. And you'll be well represented because that is the vast majority of our students are from the region. All right, since we're starting to draw close to the top of the hour, I thought we'd I'd, I'd kind of go around a few. Uh, again, I want to reiterate uh, to all of our participants uh, we have an amazing department of chemistry and biochemistry uh, from the not obviously from the faculty perspective, from leadership, from the staff. We have a tremendous number of individuals that want every single one of us uh, that comes for our learning opportunities to succeed. We have lots of tools and resources that we can make available to you. Uh, and it's just a matter of making that connection with everybody. Uh, from the uh, college, from the office of the, uh, office of the dean, uh, everyone from the dean himself to everyone else at this office, myself included, uh, we want to make sure that we have that you have the information uh, that you need to be able to thrive, to prosper, to do well here uh, with your degree uh, and as well as beyond. Uh, I know with uh, Dr. Guzman, with her big team, uh, with professional advisors, STEM counselors, uh, and everyone else that's part of the uh, uh, College of Natural Science Advising. Uh, it is their mission to make sure that we have graduates that uh, succeed academically, meet their professional goals, and thrive uh, after they leave campus. So hopefully they will still have that connection uh, and remain that coyote for, for life. And uh, maybe any sort of, uh, uh, oh, we have got a question, I'll stop myself. Uh, who, I think we had uh, asked that question before, but it's, it's great to be able to, to drive that point home. We have, who, who would we need to, contact with to help us find internships, research opportunities is one step, Dr. Cousins, might that be is let this be known, uh, let it be known to your, to your professor in your class, let the faculty know and they might say, I can get you in a listserv, uh, uh, sign up for this thing, etc. Exactly. That, that's a great first start. We also have an Office of Student Research who helps coordinate students into labs and provides training and readiness for being ready for a research lab. Thank you much. And uh, maybe some, uh, uh, we'll just stay open for a little bit more. I know sort of it takes a bit for folks to want to uh, ask a question of us. Internships are definitely the popular, uh, popular <laughs> topic question, here. as it should be. We actually do have a lot of classes with lectures and labs, uh, and those are a big part of the degree. Those others are great. Um, one thing that we've kind of implied by the inter internship and research opportunities, but we haven't really said, is that it's really vital to get involved in your campus life in some way. And for some people that will be an internship or a research position. For others, it might be being part of a club, um, being part of an ASI organization, uh, which is our Associated Students Inc., taking part in, in other campus activities, uh, rec sports, whatever it is that, that that is really your, your interest. But we find that students who get involved on campus, not the ones who just come here, go to class and leave, but the ones who actually get involved are the ones that are most successful. And I'll definitely re reiterate that point, uh, uh, making, that, making those the commitment and connections uh, outside of the program or for activities that complement them 
will just strengthen the experience and the depth that you have here uh, as a chemistry or biochemistry major. Any more questions from anybody? Well, I'll circle back one more time to you, Dr. Cousins. I think, uh, uh, not to speak for you, but I imagine it's safe to say that folks that are considering uh, joining the department and pursuing their studies uh, in chemistry and biochemistry uh, will find open arms from the faculty and from the staff. Uh, Yes, we definitely welcome you. We're glad you came today. I know there's a lot going on in the world and a lot on your mind, but you know, next fall is next fall and during your undergraduate careers, we will hopefully be back to a, some semblance of normal. Um, and uh, you know, I'm glad you're investing this time in your future. And I hope to see most or all of you next fall. Thank you, Dr. Cousins. And on behalf of the Office of the Dean, uh, I'd like to be able to say thank you for everyone that came and spent some time with us. Uh, I'm glad that we had such a great turnout. I'm happy to have my colleagues here to be able to give us all a little peek into the richness and depthness that a degree a major in uh, chem chem chemistry and biochemistry uh, can provide you to impact yourself, your life, your community, uh, and really at the end of the day, the world. So thank you all. Uh, Dean Fantula, Dr. Guzman, Dr. Cousin, thank you. And we hope to see everyone uh, virtually and later when it is safe, we will see you on campus. So thank you to everybody. Bye-bye.